Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, November 29th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Hillary's recount lawyer in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, who was also the hired gun for Soros to fight voter ID in North Carolina, now says that the recount in North Carolina's governor race should be stopped, even though the Democrat there is leading by a razor-thin margin. Then... Are Hillary and Michelle Obama already planning for a 2020 run for president? Maybe 2020 will be hindsight. And we look at Tom Price, Trump's choice for health and human services. Fifteen years ago, Price sponsored bills for draconian gun and vaccine measures during the declared emergency. But more recently, he's been a firm opponent of Obamacare, calling for total repeal before any modification. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. I want to thank the listeners and viewers of InfoWars. We've changed the world. Even mainstream media admits that we're bigger than CNN, we're as big as Fox, we're bigger than the BBC on Quantcast, you name it. I want to thank you all for your support. And on this Thanksgiving and this Black Friday that's coming up, we're going to extend free shipping store wide to people specifically that have the promo code free. Some of the specials are as high as 50% on incredibly high quality products like Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver. That's 50% off and free shipping. That is a loss leader at InfoWarsStore.com. Trump is my president shirt is about to sell out. It's limited edition. It is for sale at cost, $9.95, shipping included. All you have to do is put in promo code free at checkout to get free shipping on top of discounts up to 50% off store wide at InfoWarsStore.com. You can also also call toll free 888-253-3139. But for myself, the InfoWars family, and everybody else in this fight, I want to salute and thank all of you for your support. Whatever you do, keep spreading the articles, the videos to everybody you know. It is absolutely devastating the globalists because we're on the march and the freaking empire is on the run. If you're like me, you woke up this morning to some of Donald Trump's tweets calling for people who burn the flag to be thrown in jail or have their citizenship revoked. Now, <laughs> this sent red flags up the pole for me like Donald Trump. What are you talking about? Citizenship revoked. That's beyond the pale. That is insane. And of course, that's all the networks have been talking about all day. But did Donald Trump actually troll everyone once again? Because, of course, Hillary Clinton was one of the sponsors of this U.S. flag burning bill uh, back in 2005. So this is the Flag Protection Act of 2005. She co-sponsored this bill saying people who uh, burn the flag either get a year in jail or a $100,000 fine. And once people started tweeting at the media that, hey, you know, Hillary Clinton actually thought the same type of consequences should face those burning a flag, then of course they sort of fell silent about that. Trump was also late night trolling CNN, saying the network did a terrible job during the campaign. They were totally in the can for Hillary Clinton and they'll never learn their lesson. Case in point, they're still attacking Alex Jones. Donald Trump and Alex Jones, the conservative conspiracy theorist and operator of the website InfoWars. He's not dealing in fact or fact that, or evidence that anyone has been provided, that he's spreading inaccurate information. To say that there's no evidence of any voter fraud it's in the United it's States of America. Widespread voter fraud, widespread serious voter well, fraud, millions said, of people it's voting illegally. This is the, a candidate who has lied more in presidential candidate history than any other candidate we have ever seen. But again, is Donald Trump really just trolling all of us? I mean, we're looking at some of his potential uh, picks to fill out key positions within his administration. Uh, today, he met with Goldman Sachs President Gary Cohn. So <laughs> this is someone who he's considering for a key position. And, you know, of course, he ran his campaign decrying the influence of big banks and international financial institutions. 
He has leaned heavily on Wall Street executives, though, as he's preparing to take office. Now, Cohn is a registered Democrat. He's been a prolific political donor, contributing more than 275,000 to Democrats, including Obama and Hillary Clinton. Um, so, you know, he actually donated to uh, Marco Rubio's campaign for the Republican presidential nomination. But nothing for Trump. So very interesting there. Uh, of course, we've now seen him talking about uh, General David Petraeus. Uh, after meeting with him, he said he was very impressed. Well, someone who's not impressed, of course, myself, David Knight. Senator Rand Paul has joined the chorus of concerned Americans saying hiring Petraeus would be like hiring Hillary Clinton. He says it would be highly hypocritical for Trump to appoint someone to his administration who mishandled classified information after he advocated criminally charging Hillary Clinton for the exact same reason. And of course, a lot of people pointed that out where uh, Petraeus was he was in trouble for doing the exact same thing, whereas they were trying to get Hillary Clinton off saying, you know, no, nothing to see here. What Rand Paul stressed is that he wants somebody who understands the Iraq war was a mistake. The nation building has been a mistake and that regime change has been a mistake. These are things that Donald Trump expressed uh, during you know, the campaigning and he says he completely agrees with it. He wants to hold uh, Donald Trump to that. That's why he supported him. And of course, let's not forget, uh, Petraeus was also very big on uh, gun control regulation. So here we have some high level CIA head, uh, former military there and saying that only the standing army, the standing military, not the, the U.S. citizens here, kind of rewriting the whole Second Amendment. So that's very troubling in that. And of course, um, here troubling, a lot of people are happy with his pick for the Health and Human Services. Uh, this is Georgia Rep Tom Price. They say he is going to put the target day one. He's going to knock out Obamacare. That's going to be his job day one. Um, this is sending a strong signal that Trump is going to uphold his pledge to repeal and replace Obamacare. Um, a lot of uh, pro-life people are very happy with this choice as well. Price is an orthopedic surgeon, and he did more than vote dozens of times with his colleagues to repeal the Affordable Care Act. He, he also put forth a detailed blueprint of what would come next, a health care system that relies more on market forces than government mandates. And of course, this is something that Donald Trump has said as well that would actually help fix Obamacare, but a big red flag here with Price is that he also put forth legislation mandating um, for mandatory vaccinations, mandatory quarantine, and mandatory gun control in emergency situations. So that is very troubling there. But again, here with this repealing Obamacare and then certain things, it's almost like they're going to work at repealing the globalist agenda initiatives first and then work on the other stuff later. So I say here we should probably give Donald Trump a chance to do what he said he's going to do. But of course, we all need to speak very vocally, very loudly when we see some trouble there on the horizon, because, you know, now that he's in the swamp, he's going to have the goblins biting at his ankles. Um, kind of some more evidence of this pushing back against the global corporate monopoly that we're seeing. He added an antitrust expert to the Justice uh, Department's transition team. So the incoming administration could be less friendly to mega mergers. This is Republican antitrust veteran um, David Higby. He's a partner at the law firm Hunton and Williams LLP. He worked for George W. Bush's administration. But their lawyers are saying that this signals a more hands-off approach to antitrust enforcement compared to what Obama uh, was used to. So, you know, you can't control corporations with government regulations or you can't control the monopoly because companies like Amazon or Google, Jeff Bezos, whatever, they use the government to get even bigger. So the way that you're able to break up these monopolies is by allowing for competition, not by trying to get the government in there to regulate everything as we see that has totally failed in the past. So, you know, that's a good sign. But just when you thought it was safe to forget about Hillary Clinton, you know, it's been three weeks, everyone's thinking, let's just move on. It's time to, you know, let Trump do his job. Well, now people are saying that Hillary Clinton could be planning yet another run for president in 2020. I don't believe it. I don't think she's gonna make it. Uh, but this is according to the National Journal columnist, Ron Fournier, he says, Hillary's involvement in Jill Stein's widely derided recount is all part of the agenda. 
Um, it's just part of her plans to keep her options open for 2020, as well as the strategy of the endless series of random viral selfies of Clinton out with voters. She just wants to portray herself as a regular person, attempting to eschew the reality that she's completely out of touch. I don't think so. She's damaged goods. She's going to be too old. And it's interesting because they're already pushing Michelle Obama for 2020. So it'll be interesting if she did. Let's just say she did roll out of the crypt and try to run in 2020. It'd be interesting to see those two going at it like they did in 2008. Of course, going back to Jill Stein, even Democrats now are just blasting her efforts, this recount effort. They're saying it's a total scam. And indeed it is. She's raised a lot of money, but that money isn't even guaranteed to go to the recount. It's going to be going to prop up uh, the Green Party. So it's totally scam. The Obama administration's come out saying that the election results accurately reflect the will of the American people. Clinton's campaign uh, attorney has actually said they haven't uncovered any actionable evidence of hacking or outside attempts to alter the voting technology. So this will be said. There's no proof. Why is she doing this? It's a total failed operation. But now she's raised even more than the $2 million necessary, $6 million plus at this point. And guess what? It's going to go to help the Green Party in the future. And here's a little bit of a hypocrisy, which I think is like a criteria of the alt-left. Hillary's lawyer, who just two days ago confirmed that he would be participating in Jill Stein's recounts in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Uh, Mark Elias is now publicly calling on North Carolina Republican gubernatorial candidate Pat McCrory to halt his recount efforts because he in, has an insurmountable 9,000 vote margin, which of course is less than half of what he's you know saying could be that gap that could really clinch the deal to show that there was some vote fraud going on there with Hillary and uh, Trump. I mean, total hypocrisy. Just move, move aside. Um, something that <laughs> was really kind of outraging people, of course, yesterday we saw uh, another attack there at Ohio State University. And immediately people were coming out saying, oh, that poor little jihadist, that poor guy, everyone, let's just feel sorry for him. Well, here's this um, filmmaker, independent filmmaker, Tariq Nasheed, a self-described anti-racism strategist. Well, he come out, comes out saying, hmm, it's very interesting that they're using the term hero to describe the white police officer who shot and killed a black suspect. Racist. Ugh, totally crazy. This guy blocked me on Twitter because I told him that the Grinch wants his eyebrows back because all he does is use racist rhetoric to get his point across. Uh, he's a total joke. Um, John Kasich actually received his own tidal wave of Twitter hate for ushering out his condolences for uh, those that were hurt in this attack yesterday. And people are blaming him, saying, you're the one that opened the floodgate, opened Ohio's borders to allow in all the international, international refugees. So people are saying that's totally your fault. And here, Trump was right about Somali migrants. Now, this was just three weeks ago. Trump actually cautioned that Somali migrants in states such as Minnesota were refusing to integrate and that a portion of them posed a terror threat. And of course, you know, people were just all in an uproar about that. But under President Obama, 43,000 Somali refugees have been settled in the U.S. with no adequate way to check their backgrounds as they enter the country. And indeed, uh, the Republican-led Congress is going to be overseeing a large-scale importation of Somali migrants. Since 2001, the U.S. has permanently resettled nearly 100,000 migrants from Somalia. This is a nation where female genital mutilation for women and girls is about 98 uh, percent. Homosexuality can be punishable by death. And in a single year, Congress is funding visas for nearly 300,000 Muslim Im immigrants from Somalia. So... This is more than than double the size of the entire population of Dayton, Ohio. 18-year-old Somali refugee Abdul Razak Ali Artan, who obtained a green card to enter the United States in 2014, injured 11 students on the Ohio State University campus yesterday, first striking them with a car and then exiting the car to attack the students with a butcher knife. WorldNet Daily reports campus police chief Craig Stone said our officer was on the scene in less than a minute and he ended the situation in less than a minute. He engaged the suspect and he eliminated the threat. 
The suspect is DOA. Artan had been quoted in the campus newspaper, The Lantern, several months ago, complaining about the school's lack of Islamic prayer rooms. He blamed the negative view Americans have of Muslims on Islamophobia planted in their minds by the U.S. media, not by the numerous terror attacks or sexual assaults. And the delusional blame game continues to mushroom. Tariq Nasheed, an extreme left documentary filmmaker, bemoaned so white officer Alan Haruko, who shot and killed the black Somali stabbing suspect in Ohio, is being paraded as a hero? That's interesting. Anti-Second Amendment Senator Tim Kaine tweeted, deeply saddened by the senseless act of gun violence at Ohio State this morning, praying for the injured and the the entire Buckeye community. Of course, no gun was used. Paul Joseph Watson pointed out that a woman named Kay tweeted, poor kid goes through hell as a child in Somalia, comes to America, probably been bullied by racists in white Ohio. Now he's dead. Thanks, Trump. And even the New World Order chimed in as Anna de Rothschild tweeted, thoughts and prayers are with the victims in Ohio. America must wake up and abolish your Second Amendment. It is 100% the problem. Trump is blind. Meanwhile, back here in reality that exists 24-7 outside of the Twitter universe, people in Columbus, Ohio now have more reason to be looking over their shoulder. As recent as February of 2016, Mohammed Berry, a Muslim immigrant from Guinea, charged into the Nazareth restaurant in Delhi in Columbus, Ohio and attacked the patrons with a machete in what was described as a bloodbath. Berry was shot dead. CNSnews.com reports 98,790 Somali refugees have settled in the United States since 9-11. More than 99% of those refugees are Muslim, reflecting the religious makeup of Somalia's population, which is almost entirely Muslim, predominantly Sunni. The largest number of Somali refugees arriving in the country since 9-11 have been settled in Minnesota, almost 16,000, Ohio, more than 7,500, and sizable communities also in Texas, New York, and Arizona. America chose Trump for a reason. Paul Joseph Watson writes, Just three weeks ago, Trump cautioned that Somali migrants in states such as Minnesota were refusing to integrate and that a portion of them posed a terror threat. Some of them are joining ISIS and spreading their extremist views all over our country and all over the world said Trump. Of course, no one wants to call it a terror attack, but Barry and Artan were just following orders from terrorists. Business Insider reports, Michael Smith, the founder of security from Kronos Advisory, who has advised Congress on terror-related issues, pointed out on Twitter that an ISIS video released days before the OSU attack showed a French ISIS member demonstrating how to kill people using knives. The ISIS member also called for attacks in the West, and in the past two months, English-language ISIS propaganda magazines have called for vehicle and knife attacks. Sorry, Anna de Rothschild and Senator Tim Kaine. Thanks to people like you and your globalist policies, this is precisely why Americans need their Second Amendment rights. John Bound for Infowars.com. Alex Jones here with a very important news update to anybody out there that wants to be prepared. But it goes beyond being prepared. Our bodies absolutely must have the good halogen iodine or we will die. And you look at all of the thyroid problems and all the people that don't have energy and that have all sorts of hormone problems. And from my research and a lot of just mainline research, it leads back to iodine over and over and over again. 
is as important as vitamin C. If you don't get iodine, you die. But most people are just efficient, so they're low energy, they're sick. You gotta have iodine in your body so that your body can produce the hormones you need. It is the base to so many things. And since I got into iodine four years ago, we've helped change the entire paradigm by developing and bringing to the public deep earth crystals from seven to 12,000 feet of the purest iodine available. Other iodine comes from the ocean or from other byproducts of chemical facilities and is tainted. It's, it's, it, it's bound, it's, it's not absorbable. I tried it. And I had incredible effects even with dirty iodine because the body needs it. When you don't have iodine, it absorbs the chlorine, the fluoride, and all these other bad halogens. It's such a game changer if you'll just research iodine for yourself. It's a fact that the federal government in the Midwest back in the 20s mandated a grungier form of iodine to the salt because people had low IQs, they had huge goiters major problems directly connected to it. There are some studies that show a 15 point increase, others show even higher, but it really is crazy to realize that this is something that is so deficient in our food chain, so deficient in our played out fields where different crops are being grown, but the federal government isn't educating people and telling them about it. That's why for a limited time, I wanna encourage everyone to go to InfoWarsLife.com and get 20% off on the best nascent iodine out there from our research truly pure survival shield x2 again that survival shield nascent iodine x2 thank you for joining us in this brief news update do yourself and your family a favor and check out the importance of iodine for yourself i think you're going to be blown away and whatever you do support the broadcast and get a bottle of survival shield nascent iodine x2 also consult your physician because if you've been deficient in it or have other issues it can have some dramatic effects as for me and most folks i talk to it's been a game changer in the positive column but still consult your physician because iodine is no joke it's a key building block of the body and if you haven't had it for a long time and suddenly have it some folks say they've experienced things like uh, a, a detoxing effect and things like that. You've got to have vitamin C. You've got to have iodine to live. You've got to have water to live. Iodine is key. You must have it. But consult your physician first before you get powerful Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2 at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free. We can answer your questions. 888 253 3139. There is an information warfare happening right now. It's a fight for our minds. And Infowars.com is on the front lines. Download our free multimedia app at Infowars.com forward slash app. It's free, it's on Droid, it's on Apple, you name it. Infowars.com forward slash app. Take action. Everybody's been watching Donald Trump's picks, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, he has a lot of people on his list and positions that he's not filled yet at the top. And one of those I want to talk about tonight is Treasury Secretary. Because we've got a possibility here of somebody that he might appoint that would end the Fed. This guy is on the same page as Ron Paul, and Donald Trump met with him yesterday. He is on the same page as Ron Paul, and yet as a former banker of a regional bank, uh, BB&T, he understands the details of the banking industry and can speak to those details. He's also been uh, with the Cato Institute. And I'm going to read you uh, some of the things that he wrote. But who are the people that are on the short list for Donald Trump's Treasury Secretary? Of course, there's Steve Mnuchin, who is a Goldman Sachs banker. 17 years he was with Goldman Sachs. He was also Trump's campaign chair since May. So there's a close personal relationship there. Most people believe that because of that, he is the front runner yet. Uh, Donald Trump is still meeting with other people. We have House Financial Services Chairman Jeb Henserling, who is going to meet with Trump on Thursday. Uh, but yesterday he met with John Allison, as I pointed out, former CEO of BB&T. Now, Ron Paul has said, and rightly so, that to really make America great again, we need to end the Fed. This guy could be the man who ends the Fed. Business Insider said Trump is meeting with an ex-banker uh, CEO who wants to abolish the Federal Reserve and return to the gold standard. They said that Trump's uh, been on the campaign trail. He questioned the future of the Financial Reserve's political independence. But Allison also takes that rhetoric a step further. He said, I would get rid of the Federal Reserve because of the volatility in the economy is primarily caused by the Fed. When the Fed is radically changing the money supply, distorting interest rates, over-regulating the financial sector, it makes rational economic calculation difficult. Markets do form bubbles, but the Fed makes them worse. Now, I tell you this because... Donald Trump has not made this pick yet, just as he's not made the Secretary of State pick. 
And we look at people like Mitt Romney, people like David Petraeus. I think we need to speak out. Now is not the time to go to sleep. Now is the time to pay careful attention to the people that are on the list that uh, Donald Trump is interviewing. We need to help him stay outside of Washington and away from influences that are going to really subvert his presidency in the same way we saw Ronald Reagan's presidency get subverted. So I think we need to support the good people. I think we need to oppose the bad people as we see this developing. And let me read you some of the things that John Allison wrote at the Cato Institute, because he really does understand the situation. He's a government skeptic. He says this, one observation in my 40-year career at bb and I don't know it a single time when federal regulators, primarily FDIC, but actually identified a significant bank failure in advance. Regulators are always the last ones to the party after everybody in the market, the other bankers, know something's going on. Thus, in that context, regulators have a 100% failure rate. Indeed, in my experience, whenever they get involved with a bank that's struggling, they always make it worse because they don't know how to run a bank. See, that's the key thing. He also points out the self-interest of the bureaucracy. He says they like to talk about the public good, but really what they're pursuing is the regulatory good. He says sometimes the public good and the regulatory good may align, but they don't manage for the public good. They consistently manage for the regulatory good. He points out that uh, the people who get appointed to these positions are people who are politically connected. Hopefully that will change. Maybe Donald Trump will reach out to somebody who is not part of the political establishment, like John Allison, who understands this. Then he goes on to characterize regulations under Bush, Clinton, and Obama, and he is spot on. Listen to this. He said, President Bill Clinton's big issue was fair lending. The regulators paid almost no attention to safety or to soundness. And what happened? We got the massive consolidation of banks. We got too big to fail. We got the repeal of Glass-Steagall, which allowed them to do things that were not sound. So he understands that. Then he says under President George W. Bush, the focus was almost exclusively on the Patriot Act. One of the great myths is that banks were deregulated under Bush, yet three major new laws were passed under his administration. The Privacy Act, the Sardanes-Oxley, and the Patriot Act. A massive increase in regulations in the Bush era, the most in the current administration. And he goes on to say that under President Obama, we have a truly unique phenomenon, an administration that likes all regulations. And so we could go on with this, but we don't have the time. Let me just finish up with what he has to say about Dodd-Frank. He said under new consumer compliance provisions of Dodd-Frank, the qualified lending standards are very loose. In fact, standards are below subprime, which makes progressives happy. However, the paperwork is extraordinarily complex. That's why small banks are going out of business. He says it's ironic that the Fed is printing money willy-nilly, then having regulators making it harder for banks to make loans to small businesses and going out of business themselves. So... Whether or not Donald Trump picks John Allison, he is a man to listen to, and we should consider that. For InfoWars.com, I'm David Knight. This is Owen Troyer for InfoWars.com. We're here at the University of Texas in Austin, and we're going to find out what students here think about the late communist dictator, Fidel Castro. I kind of didn't even know he was still alive until, like, he died. But, I mean, I knew who he was, and I know a lot of people are happy about his death, which, and then there's some people that are sad, so. Um, I just hope the best for Cuba right now. I know they had, he caused a lot of, uh, a lot of uproar in the past, so. I guess it signifies like a change, a good change. Honestly, I think he was a bad dictator, but he's dead. I think it's funny that like America spent millions trying to kill him and then he just like dies off on his own. I don't think he was a very good leader. I am not upset that he's dead at all. And I hope that somebody else takes over his ruling and does way better than he did. Um, he was a dictator and should not be romanticized for recently dying. It is upsetting that he died, of course, but... I'm Taiwanese, so I do have a kind of negative image of communism in general, but man's a man. He died, left a legacy, but it's really up to the Cubans to decide who, what opinion they should hold. <laughs> Other than the irony of him dying on Black Friday, I don't really have too many uh, opinions. Uh, well, as a South American, I'm from Colombia. Um, he always had the fame of, um, of being a dictator and uh, being... Um, aggressive and uh, having his people uh, submerged into a dictatorship. He provided their free education in Cuba. Uh, it's the country that has graduated the most doctors uh, per capita. Oh, I don't have any good opinions on that one, my bad. Well, based off of like how Cubans feel about it, 
and how he was very oppressive and everything. Um, I guess I would side on their um, their opinions because they were the ones that were oppressed. And I said it's, a, it's probably a good thing that he passed away. I don't know how he is as a person, historically. Did both good and bad things. Bad mostly for US. Good for mostly Cuba, for the most part. Uh, I know he did a lot of bad stuff for the Cuban people and uh, uh, but he increased, I know he increased the amount of uh, doctors in the country dramatically. I mean he did egregious things and death is sad but hopefully there's a better tomorrow. Um, I guess I'm not too supportive of him just because I have a lot of friends that like immigrated here from Cuba and just from talking to them and like their family history. I don't think that he's necessarily like, the best person. Well, I think he was an oppressive dictator of an authoritarian regime, a communist regime that resisted the uh, the influence of the United States in a lot of ways. And yeah, glad he's dead. Who would you guys prefer as a leader, Donald Trump or Fidel Castro? Donald Trump. Yeah, that, that's probably Donald Trump. Gotta go with Donald there too. Uh, no comment. Come on. No, I really don't know. So you think Trump is as bad as Castro? Um, I wouldn't say as bad, but to pick between those two, it's I would need more research. I mean, I would still go with Trump because, I don't know, even though Trump's personality is a little frightening, I think that, like, his past is not related to communism, and that's yeah. a little bit, you know, more <laughs> um, assuring. I'm, like, Republican, so I would say not communism. <laughs> Anything besides Donald Trump, honestly, at this so point. So Castro over Trump? I guess. Donald Trump or Fidel Castro? Uh, probably Trump. What about you? Probably Trump. <laughs> uh, Trump. You pick Trump? Yeah. Probably Donald Trump. Uh, maybe Donald Trump. I feel like he has like a different way to like handle things and look at things, and maybe his way is like the way to do it. So I know Fidel Castro is not. Donald Trump or Fidel Castro? <sighs> Neither. <laughs> Well, I feel like Castro has a lot of conflicts with the general, like, government of America, right? That just, that wouldn't work. So, folks, we just heard from the students here at the University of Texas. Now, most did not have an in-depth understanding of Fidel Castro. Some didn't know much about him at all. But most of the people here understood on the surface that he was a communist dictator and oppressive, though some said that the good outweighed the bad. Others said that the bad outweighed the good. But you saw the amazing reaction we got from people when they had the choice between Trump and Castro. Some were so paralyzed they couldn't even make that choice. When we threw them a third option, Trump, Castro, or death, you saw the reaction to that. It was still hard for them to choose between Donald Trump, Fidel Castro, or death. It must be tough here at the University of Texas. This is the answer for your children to totally absorb the multivitamins, the minerals, the amino acids, everything at once. Unveil. Vitamin Mineral Fusion Advanced Multivitamin Formula, 30 servings, fruit punch flavored dietary supplement. It is simply amazing. Infowarslife.com. There's a million different products like this out there that they're, you know, they're good in different ways. But this takes all of the vitamins, all of the essential amino acids, all of the essential compounds and minerals that you need, puts it into something oh. that's great tasting as mm. opposed to like clumpy, gross stuff. And you can put it in your drink every morning. I put it in my protein shake. It is the platinum standard, in my view, of multivitamins in terms of an advanced multi-drink vitamin. The cleanest, the purest, new stuff had to be invented. That's why it took this long to even bring us something this good. Some companies are going to take a small amount of vitamins and make it, you know, so there's so much filler, it looks like there's a lot. This is ultra concentrated. We're not playing games here. Okay, this Well, that's my philosophy. That's your philosophy. Yeah. This I want to, but again, there's some great stuff out there. Yeah. And there's other, you know. No, of course. Definitely. There's other powders I promote at InfoWarsHealth.com. Yeah, they're excellent. I mean, there's some good stuff out there. This is just the very best we can bring you. And when you buy it, you support InfoWars. You support the reporters. You support yourself. Tell folks about some of these uh, other things that are in this uh, and why this is just this total complete package uh, for your body. Because, uh, again, we didn't put the synthetic amino acids. We didn't put the synthetic vitamins. We didn't. We put the plant-based, high-quality, clean, natural uh, ingredients into this. Yeah, exactly. So you've got your standard vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin E, the list goes on. A huge amount of vitamin C, by the way. Tell folks yeah, about that. A thousand plus percent of your daily value, which is what you need. 
because the, you know, FDA guidelines, we all know about those. Zinc, magnesium, selenium, L-glutamine. Each one of these you could go on for about 10 minutes about the benefits of these things. Alpha lipoic acid, folic acid, calcium, and the list goes on. 34 other ones you can check out. Go to InfoWarsLife.com. The label's up there. You've got the entire ingredients list that you can neurotically examine for yourself. And just... By the way, look on the other side, too, because uh, we're showing people the... Uh minerals and things. Let's look at the vitamins right there. Old Scott in there. I mean, it's amazing. Top left. Again, if you're radio listeners, infowars.com forward slash show. Vitamin A has 4,333% uh, from beta carotene and what's the other source? I just know this all the best sources. Retinol. So you've also got your vitamin D at 1,000 IU, which is a large dose actually. And you know what? Some people could say, well, isn't this competing with the other products? Well, yeah, you know what? We could be like some people and just take all the stuff that we sell also at InfoWarsLife.com and not put any of it, but then it wouldn't be a balanced formula and we're not going to do that. And it might actually hurt us in the long run to put all the best stuff in here, but that's just the way we got to do it because we can't start thinking like that. So get them today, InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalists. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Super Male has the key concentrated natural compounds that my body needed to go to the next level. Today is the day to take the InfoWarsLife.com challenge and to secure your bottle of Super Male or Super Female Vitality. Check them out today at InfoWarsLife.com or give our crew a call at 888-253-3139. Democrats headed into the election on Tuesday, November 8th. They woke up to a huge shock. They lost a lot of their seats. We're going to be talking about this. I'm Margaret Hall reporting for InfoWars.com. I'm joined in studio by our, by our nightly news director, Rob Dew. And the shock, they're wiping the smirk off their faces, number one, Rob. But number two... I'm not wiping mine He's up. not. He knew the whole time. Number two, they're scrambling to find a new leader in the wake of what was a catastrophe for them. You know, I pulled this article, and you can't believe the rhetoric just before... For Trump won. One of them says Trump's incendiary presidential campaign would be a curse on vulnerable Republicans. Of course, that didn't happen. And now they're all scrambling because they're the vulnerable ones and they're about to prop up this ridiculous leader yet again, right. uh, 14 years straight. I, I don't know what they're thinking. You think that they would get rid of her. Nancy Pelosi has been in power since 07 as Speaker <laughs> of the House. And she, the levels of people, her levels of Democrats in the House have gone down. <sighs> they've just gone down. They've gone. Down. They're at their lowest level since 1929. So I really don't know what she's expecting. They'll probably just put her in because the Democrats haven't learned from this election. They're still fighting these. Uh, they're still playing this race game, this gender game. That you know, the whole deck is stacked against anybody um, if, if they're not a, a white male. You and think it's just because she's a woman? I mean, is that the only appeal that she would have if you're a Democrat voting? I think at this point, yeah, because she really, she hasn't said anything very, she said some really stupid statements. We're going to get to a whole compilation of them at the end of this. Rob brought you such a yeah. treat. Um, Nancy Pelosi, Idiocy 101. Uh, you mentioned that she has a contender. Tim Ryan is, right. is his name. He's coming out of Ohio. Little known about this guy. Um, in one article that we pulled from the Washington Post, apparently comes out of the Rust Belt. Here's what he had to say on election night, which is hilarious on the eve of the vote. We're within striking distance. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised tomorrow. We have a lot of support regarding Hillary Clinton's victory. So he's not a bright guy, clearly. Um, but it looks like... He couldn't even bring people to a rally that had LeBron James at it in Cleveland. Serious? I, there was like 300 people there. But he's from Ohio, which is the melting pot. And uh, supposedly in his area, uh, he's well-liked, despite Trump having taken Ohio. He cites... Um, how disliked in this article Trump actually is and was in Ohio, which makes no sense at all. But it looks like he's trying to pull on the fact that he's this middle America uh, guy who's mm -hmm. this average Joe. Um, Washington Post has already declared her the victor. She's already declared it herself, by the way. I'm just quoting her. And uh, she's got some arrogance about her, frankly. 
I mean, oh, I guess it's yeah. hers. Hey, let's let me get, get into this. Back <laughs> back in July, she made, or maybe it was in June. It was June in 2016. Um, she made a shoe trip. She went to go shop at a shoe store. And here's what Paul Smith was actually a witness to this. Here's what he wrote. A large, perfectly polished and gleaming black SUV is attempting a left turn from Hunt onto southbound Maine. Not easy. Suddenly, blue and red lights are flashing from the windshield uh, of the SUV. And I, I said to my friends, I've never seen any. That's not a regular vehicle. I think that's illegal. That's dangerous. He points out that a police car ha happens to be going northbound, pulls into the center lane, who's, and the, the policeman starts shaking his arms and hollering at the driver of the SUV, who pays no attention to him, lest this lady out, and she walks in to the shoe store, which is called uh, Foot Candy, I believe. Yeah, Foot Candy. All right. Then he says goodbye to his friends. He's walking up to the shoe store. As I approach Foot Candy, Nancy Pelosi comes out with shopping bags, and a man assists her into the SUV. The SUV flashing lights burst back on, and they burst back into southbound traffic. He goes, wow, <laughs> privilege, power, whose SUV? Taxpayers? He questioned. Say it ain't so, Nancy. So this guy's probably a Democrat, too. Probably one of these, you know, do-gooder Democrats who thinks that, you know, because they have the right feelings right. that everything's okay. But here she is, just one of the, you know, this is her, how she, she acts emergency. with her power. Yeah, right. She's she's without, and not only that, but the woman never takes responsibility for anything that she says or does at all. Um, I can understand speeding to get shoes. This that I brought you, I cannot understand. Um, and I didn't know this prior to, to looking at this, but apparently members of Congress, they actually have the ability to um, commit insider trading. Which oh yeah, it's I legal, this, right? Right. We would be re we would be fined, jailed, our homes would be gone. Apparently, uh, sixty minutes in an expose on her about how she bought these stocks and these initial IPOs. She made major money uh, from from class of person, you know, information that she had access to that you and I. It would be a crime if we capitalized on it. Not illegal for her to do it, but it really it lets you know about the character of the woman. She's. She's using the extent of her, her, you know, whatever she has in that office to, to the highest possible degree to benefit herself. I think if it's you're a Democratic woman, you could do whatever you want in this country. You could probably kill people with a machete, drive over them with a car. See, that guy was, was <laughs> a Somali man. He wasn't allowed to do that. But office. if Nancy Pelosi ran down a bunch of people in Ohio State and started hacking them with a machete, it would probably be okay. They'd probably say, well, she's a woman. Um, you know, and she's Democrat, so obviously she had our best intentions in heart. Right. Well, you can't question uh, the motivation of Nancy Pelosi. That's that's for sure. Or you know, the, the woman is is untouchable as far as I'm concerned. 14 years in power, and what has she done exactly other than use her position to buy expensive shoes and make a crap ton of money uh, based on information? Well, now, and, and the Clintons did the same thing. If you true. when they came out of the presidency, we were dead broke. <laughs> and then she becomes a senator. They start the Clinton Foundation, and they have. Hundreds of millions of dollars now. They're worth like over a hundred million dollars. Their daughter has a, a multi-million dollar apartment in right, New York. Right. Like, who can afford this stuff on the salary of a senator from New York? Not no. No, you can't really do that unless you're siphoning off that money from your multi-billion dollar Clinton Foundation. You know, you you want to believe that people are magnanimous, they have good hearts, but then you look at what they're doing, you're like, holy mother, they are using their positions of power and influence. Um, to line their own pockets. And she she's a total Clinton crony as far as I'm concerned. Now, moving right along the DNC, we've talked about how the Democratic Party as a whole in Congress, they're scrambling to find a head now that Trump has um, figuratively cut it off. The DNC, the same thing. Alex has covered this time and again. I know you have as well. Um, how corrupt they are. We've talked about WikiLeaks, you know, what, what they're actually doing, uh, what they did to Bernie Sanders, frankly. And uh, since... What w they did in the debates. They don't play they, by the rules. They don't Donna play by Brazil. the rules. Donna Brazil. Exactly. Precisely. Uh, they're scrambling to find a head now that theirs has been severed. Of course, Brazil disgracefully removed, um, also fired from CNN. And uh, Keith Ellison is who they're throwing up as the contender, the main contender, to head the DNC. Just a little bit about him. Of course, he's a Muslim. Uh, he's in Congress. And uh, he's made some pretty inflammatory, radical statements. He loves Fidel Castro. He loves Fidel. Yeah. Not, uh, he called Fidel Ca Get this, Rob. So uh, this is what he had to say about uh, Castro's death and his passing. Did he use dictatorial, t dictate, dictatorial tactics? Yes, probably he did. But did he also stand up for peace and freedom in Africa? Absolutely. When was that? Am I when he sent something? a bunch of Cubans to actually run uh, death squad? Right.
right. And, okay. The, and try a coup in Africa. What is he talking about? I mean, I, in fact, I think Che went to Africa to, uh, it, it, to foment that rebellion. You know, people that that really tells you where his politics lie. Is he a communist? That would be my next question. You know, what's what's up with Keith Ellison? He actually advocated for a separate state for black people in America at one point. He's a radical. The Democratic Party is not the party of the people anymore. They were a creature of Wall Street for the last 20 years. So right. it's 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 a, a deserving death at this point that is happening slowly before our eyes. Maybe, uh, you know, people like, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren can kind of keep it revival. But I think it's going to go more socialist than it is more centrist. But without further ado now, let's go to those amazing Nancy Pelosi quotes, which tells you why. Yeah, it makes me wonder why, how somebody like this could still be in elected office. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. You increase taxes, that also hurts growth. Well, it's about timing. It's about timing, and it's about timing as to when you make cuts as well. Uh, we, but you, could you, the, the fiscal cliff, you raise taxes, $650 billion right away. Yeah, and that was a very good thing to do on people making uh, over uh, the high end uh, in our um, um, population. I don't think he's ever done anything for political reasons. <laughs> The Affordable Care Act is bringing the cost of, of health care in our country down and in both the public and private sector, and that is what is largely responsible for the deficit coming down. And everybody will have lower rates, more, uh, better quality care, and better access. Uh, I don't remember saying that every, everybody in the country would have a lower premium. And it is one year this week since the Supreme Court upheld the constitutionality of the Affordable Care Act. So we have a lot to celebrate, and that's why we're proud to stand before the flags uh, to celebrate life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We'll also uh, be observing uh, health independence. This week uh, uh, marks one year since the Supreme Court upheld the Affordable Care Act. Uh, it captures the spirit of our founders, uh, uh, the spirit they wrote in the Declaration of Independence. Life, liberty, and the pursuit. But there was an article last Friday in Hollywood Reporter that is so important where Steve Bannon, the chief strategist for President-elect Trump, lays it out that globalism was designed to make us poor and set up this elite system for rich families to control everything. And that America is going to absolutely now lead the world out of this with incredible prosperity, and they have the actuaries and the numbers, with cutting taxes on working class people that will bring back Americana under the Republican Party. But he says we've got to purge the Republicans of the establishment people, and we've got to deliver to the people, and we will get a majority vote from whites, Hispanics, blacks, you name it. Because it'll be based on having a sovereign, prosperous nation, not one where the government takes the wealth from the middle class and then redistributes it to a growing, dumbed-down, giant underpopulation made up of every race of human. If you want human liberty, if you want freedom, if you want self-determination, if you want to be able to control at least a small part of your own destiny, we are brothers, we are sisters, in arms together in the great quest for free association, free will, and the right for self-determination. I salute you, and again, thank you for taking the info war, which you are the heart of, to the next level, and to encourage you to continue right through this Thanksgiving to share the information with your friends and family, to share the articles, the videos, the URLs, the podcast, and to support the broadcast by getting the amazing pro-Second Amendment apparel, the pro-Trump apparel, the pro-nationalism apparel, the non-GMO heirloom seeds, the high-quality water filtration systems, the amazing supplements and nutraceuticals, which are running 30 to 50% off right through this week with every day having a loss leader special at InfoWarsStore.com. Check it out today and please continue to support this operation. <laughs> I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. We covered this story, Joe Biggs and I, yesterday about this Somalian refugee who plowed into a group of students, took out a butcher knife, hacking into nine of them, ultimately shot and killed by police. And we're 
we're beginning to see the media spin, frankly, about this young man, who he is, the refugee crisis as a whole. It's really starting to annoy me. And I know you brought some really interesting information, especially on social media, regarding who this attacker was and how people are feeling about it. Does it annoy you at all to see the media spin on this already so quickly? What I can't stand is when an attack comes out, it's automatically they're, they're ready to say white guy. Right. White guy with a gun. Lone wolf is yeah. how they're painting this in particular. He's yeah. not a part It's a lone wolf. I mean, he has nothing to do with ISIS whatsoever, even right. though ISIS particularly called out for an attack like this on American soil. And ISIS has now come out today and claimed that this guy was part of their brotherhood mm -hmm. and that this was an attack that they hold dear. And he represents ISIS and was one of their soldiers for Allah. You know, what I can't stand is is the left is always ready to just jump immediately on gun control. Now, look at this. Senator uh, Tim Kaine, deeply saddened by the senseless act of gun violence at Ohio State this morning, praying for the injured and the entire Buckeye community. Hello, McFly. <laughs> it was a car and a butcher's knife. <laughs> hey, how about we wait till the facts come out before you jump on here? with your commie love and chubby fingers and start tweeting away right. and sound like an unprofessional douchebag. Well, people don't First, even know who Tim Kaine is anymore. <laughs> the election's over. They're like, who is So, so I told the guy, I said, sorry, a hero with a gun killed your terrorist buddy, Sharia Tim Kaine. When real heroes kill terrorists, Tim calls it senseless gun violence. Right. So that's me trolling him. Oh, nice. Here's the lady from Moms Demand Action, Shannon Watts. Our nations protect their students. America gives dangerous people guns and asks students to defend themselves. Well, you don't allow your students to have guns. Second of all, a gun wasn't used in the attack. So maybe just chill out on the tweets for a minute until we get all the facts. Okay, moms demand action. <laughs> maybe you should pull out a dildo and start another rally hey, for that. You know, there, there, is a, there it is right there. there. <laughs> hey, they're the, they're the dildo uh, protesters. They love doing this. Our, Here's another one. said it's a family show. That's right. right. Anyway, but you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, they, they're, they're they need to get the facts straight. That's the bottom line here. They need to get the facts straight. Can't wait for all the politicians who refuse to adjust gun laws and send their thoughts and prayers to Ohio State. Well, let's first think about what we're tweeting and get the facts first. And I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. They're so quick to jump on this and blame white people, blame guns. But as soon as it came out that this guy was of Somali descent, then all of a sudden you saw on Twitter the trend went all the way down to 10. Right. They Precisely. It, 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 they, they don't want to sit here and give that any any light whatsoever because right. it's hard to talk about this because at the end of the day we should feel guilty because of our white privilege we're the right. ones that caused this we our this, mean tweets we saw this with omar mateen and uh the 49 people who died in that pulse nightclub shooting we saw this with uh i think their last name is the farouks if i'm not mistaken in san bernardino and that you know that mass death we see this apology stance happening every single time where the facts are totally sanitized from an article and you mentioned uh social media this um you Young man Abdullah um, Artin actually posted on Facebook expressing anger about the treatment of Muslims around the world. Um, he, you know, this message was discovered by law enforcement um, investigators looking into a social media page. So he was he was talking about how mistreated Muslims are around the world, and then his response to that is to go and try to kill them. Oh yeah, this one lady goes, "Poor kid goes through hell as a child in Somalia, comes to America, probably have been bullied by racists in white Ohio." Now he's dead. Hashtag thanks Trump. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it's not Islam funny. can attack people. Trump supporter people attack people, and that guy was obviously not right in his mind. And I went, yet yeah, you'll be the first to jump on the gun control bandwagon, right? Won't you? It's insanity, not uh, radical Islam. Look, th there it's is anything a problem. But radical Islam is. <laughs> gun violence, it's Trump, it's uh, mental instability, it's anything but radical Islam. Radical Islam is not a problem. Meanwhile, let's look at the list of Islamic terror attacks in 2016, and they stopped doing this test in July because there's quite frankly so many. During this time period, there were 1,274 Islamic attacks in which 11,774 people were killed and 14,303 killed around the world. So that seems kind of like a problem. And their eyes will be like, they just think, well, we'll get those 11,774 people back. It's okay. Don't worry about it. No, this is an issue, and we should call it radical Islam. That is what it is. I feel like it's a breath of fresh air that we're going to have a president who's quite frankly not scared to say it for once. Radical Islam. Exactly. Radical Islam. Let's all say it together.
You know, the, the radicalization process, and that's largely why uh, you, and I are, you and I are here, because we wanted to talk about how um, there is a radical, radicalization process that happens, and we have to acknowledge it. And for, what, for whatever reason this young man decided to become radicalized and become an ISIS sympathizer, it's annoying that the media is trying to whitewash it and just call him a lone wolf um, or somebody that had a mental issue, because that's not what was happening. And, and don't you think it's part of the problem when people refuse to even acknowledge that process? I mean, there's a process to this. Um, or no? The, the, there's, the there's, it, a, it, no, it well, there, there, there's a, it's a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a guy named Ami Horowitz who was in Minnesota, Minneapolis. He actually interviewed tons of Somalians. They have a huge population there. And he asked them, what do you think about Sharia law? From children all the way up to old women, we're all like, Sharia law is good. Uh, and then he asked, do you prefer Sharia law over American law? They all said yes. Then he says, would you rather live in Somalia or in the USA? And they all said, these are people who live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. They would all rather live in Somalia. This is the problem. They don't want to fit in. Right. They don't want to assimilate don't to our way of to life. Take a constitutional test to to acquire citizenship. You have to love and profess the Constitution of the United States, not Sharia law. Isn't that sort of required? Yeah, but if you look at the culture of these people, just like in Iraq and Afghanistan and other Muslim nations, uh, it's okay to lie to non-believers. So for them, when they when they do that and they lie and they know they're not being truthful, it's okay because at the end of the day, they're trying. It's an ends to a mean or mean to an end. So they're doing that so they can get in. And the report we did last week, remember the guy who was uh, one of the uh, terrorists who'd been held at Guantanamo? Right. He said he didn't want another 9-11 attack. He said that's a little too hard. It's easier for them to systematically come in, use these open borders, breed their way in, use the laws against us to better benefit themselves, and then usher in Sharia law and then take over the world. And that, when they find America at its weakest point, that's when they slit the throat. There's an agenda, is, is, is what that confirms. There's an agenda going on, and uh, we're very foolish to ignore it. What do you make? Okay, so I just want to shift this to Trump because I know we're running out of time. But we talked about, you know, these instances on the ground and how Trump is being blamed in tweets, ironically. I don't even know what he had to do. What did he have to do with this, Biggs? I mean, what's wrong with people and their, and their conscience? Well, it's 2016, and he's a white person. Right, so he's to blame. He is to blame for, for this. He is a racist nationalist and he right. wants uh, sovereignty and he wants uh, secure borders right. and he wants to to vet people that are coming into our country when he wants to make sure that these are people who share our values so at the end of the day that makes him a big old racist bigot right chris <laughs> eloquently put by the way eloquently put hey man you know, that, that's just how the liberal left is and that it, it's pathetic we live in this day and age where it's come to this point where we can't even be proud americans we can't even be proud to go out and practice our faiths. Meanwhile, this guy was upset because at another university, they didn't have enough prayer rooms for him. So they want to, you know, claim that they're the peaceful religion or the religion of peace. Religion Meanwhile, of peace. to prove it, they're willing to go out and kill Murder. people and or attack them, cut them, drive them over with cars, throw them off bridges, uh, kill homosexuals, do all this stuff to prove just how peaceful they are. That's insanity. It is insanity. Omar Hassan, who's the president of this Columbus, Ohio-based Somali Community Association, he said that uh, a member of Artan's family uh, told him that the suspect's mother and siblings had been interviewed by law enforcement and authorities after the incident in Columbus. Just to point this out, they're the second biggest Somali population in the U.S., about 50,000 immigrants from the East African nation residing in this community. So we're talking about a massive population swell in one area. And there's a guy named for uh, Farah, who is a Muslim who goes to uh, Ohio State, who is a Somali refugee, says attacks blamed on terrorism have a familiar aftermath on campuses, snide comments, peering eyes. Well, people are kind of scared. Mm -hmm. If you've gone through an attack and a certain type of person did it because of religious beliefs or whatever, that's going to make people a bit apprehensive of other people who look just like that and or act like that. Mm -hmm. That's not racist. That's just what happens after traumatic experience. Right. People are automatically going to be a little apprehensive of that. Well, you know what? That's it for tonight's <laughs> segment on this. I've enjoyed our conversation, Thank Mark. You. It's been very informative. Uh, tune in tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, back here at the InfoWars Nightly News. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health.
but no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.